Hi, welcome to the third part of the blouse sewing video that I've been doing as a series. Uh, now, the last part, uh, the part two, I had left it with the attachment of these two. Now, I've done, I've proceeded a little to uh, save time. I'll explain what I've done. Take your uh, back portion and the front portion that is going to come on that side of the back portion. Match the tips and see you will have an extra jetting out. I've folded it and uh, I've made a seam there. Whatever extra comes when you match up uh, from tip to tip, you will have a little extra coming out. Fold that portion like this and sew it up. You will have a seam here when you sew it up. Okay. Once you sew it up, both the sides will be of the same length okay after this you will have to join the shoulders so make sure your armhole is clean because of the dart there might be an uh, there might be slight up and down gently cut to make it look clean now place the shoulders one on top of the other sometimes when you are not concentrating you may end up keeping the neck of uh, one side with the armhole of the other side please make sure you are keeping only the armholes together of the front and back match the seams on the shoulder and make a half an inch seam now your shoulders are joined you have to proceed with the sleeve take your sleeve Keep the right side of the blouse, body of the blouse facing up. Take your seam and match the right sides together. The right sides together. Okay. If uh, you have to be very careful, the front uh, armhole fish cut that we had made should come on the front side. You'll have two sleeves, uh, sleeves. Check which has that coming on the front and place it there. Now match up the midpoints of both and start sewing. You will have to adjust a little bit here and there because it may not lie perfectly on the line if there is a slight variation in the cutting. I prefer starting from the middle and going to the uh, tips. In that way my midpoint is always lying in the midpoint and I don't get confused. So adjust it as you sew along the armhole. I have not been using my pins today. I usually use a lot of my pins so I sit with the pin cushion in my hand most often. Come reverse on it so you have a double stitch there in the arms. And proceed to the next side. Lining it with the armhole. Don't stretch your fabric too much. Each fabric has different uh, stretching capabilities. If you end up stretching it too much when you wear it, there might be an issue. So gently hold it in place. Come back reverse for the second round of stitching. Okay. 
so your sleeve is attached. I've done that on the other side too. Now you have to attach your button uh, loop and uh, hook uh, pieces, strips. One is a 3 by 12 inch, one is uh, around 2 by 12, one and a half to 2 by 12 is fine. I usually prefer the hook portion, the hook portion will be narrower coming on my left side. There are uh, people attach the loop portion on the left side too. It is your convenience. I prefer it this way. Keep the right sides together and sew them. You have you will have a little uh, extra jetting out. That's no issue. We will fix that up. The, for the hook portion, uh, the strip comes on top of the fabric. For the loop portion, the strip comes below the fabric. I have given half an inch uh, seam elements and I have attached this. Now, you will fold that in half outside you will fold that into half this is my way of doing it there are many ways in doing this there is too much extra lying out so we can trim keep just a bit left fold that into half then Hold that inward, close it here, hope you are able to see, see it. I have folded it into half, fold that like this and fold it inward so that it closes that open end and fold it up again so only the seam is left out. Okay. I'll first fold it into half, then fold it inward slightly, then fold it totally covering that seam and totally fold it. I'll have just the tip seam out. Now sew this. I'll sew from the top portion just next to the joint. Okay. Some people prefer to have their uh, hook portions wider. You could have it wider by just folding it like this instead of folding it like this and like this. I prefer it wider so I will just fold it like this. While folding in the tip make sure this end is closed now. The finished end is closed and fold it. I prefer it uh, wider because that helps helps me conceal all the hook uh, that I'm going to stitch into it. The threads get concealed in the layers between it. I need not come to the top layer at all. It's all personal difference. And come back near the joint again. It, uh, this seam that I have made now is a little away from the joint. Now I will come back off near the joint. So I form a rectangle like seam there.
so I have a seam that is like a box and this is gone in. and I prefer a wider uh, piece because it makes it a lot more flatter I don't like a bumpy piece, uh, pleat there come to the other uh, piece neck, neck portion now you will be attaching your uh, loop portion there for the loop portion you will be attaching it at the bottom of the uh, body of the blouse so it goes down with its right side facing up if there are any tiny wee, uh, bits trim them off and align them make a half an inch seam uh, make a quarter inch seam sorry all the extras that are uh, jetting out I will just uh, align it in such a way that they, are, they can be trimmed off So you have something like this, the reverse side and the front side of it are facing together. Now again here, fold it into half, fold it into half, I'll trim the extra things off. Fold it into half. and you will bring it to the top while bringing it to the top in the top if there is an extra don't bother in the bottom fold the extra and bring it to the top just a little about where you you have your stitch so this will look like a projecting piece out of your blouse hope you are able to see what I am doing and you will stitch on this the little portion that is jetting out from your attachment portion Okay, I have had a power cut. So attach this along this line and keep it. Uh, I'll come back to you in the next part and explain how we will finish the neck portion of the blouse for which you will have to make a strip. We call it as a bias strip. You can make it cross cut and a straight cut. I'll explain that now. Hope you are able to see what I've done. A cross cut is in the fabric taking a cross piece. Along the uh, cross piece, the fabric will stretch a lot more than along the straight. Okay, so take a cross piece, uh, measure your, uh, we use a cross piece for the curved area of the neck and a straight piece for the straight parts of the neck. Uh, this is for the piping that we give around the neck. So measure how much of the cross piece you will need. For the neck uh, front area, it is going to be curved. I've used a straight portion for the a straight pattern for the back. So you'll need a straight piece uh, for that. For the front, you will need a curved piece. So go along the curve of the front neck, measure it and make a cross, make a cross bits of 2 inch width in your leftover fabric. 
you need not waste a lot of fabric you can patch them up so you can use smaller bits of cross bits and then patch them up and take two inch of straight bit for the measure for the back area and take two inch uh, wide long uh, according to your neck size take those bits and join them up for the front i've joined up see the cross bit stretches this is also a cross bit that stretches but the straight bit doesn't stretch so much. I've joined this cross in straight bits. Fold them after joining and iron them off. That makes uh, it easier to join this uh, as a belt. I'll come back in the next part and explain how we finish the neck portion of the blouse. See you.